Hi Aries! Welcome to February of 2018. So um, this is for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. Personally, I would watch my moon sign if I were you. Um, there's a video in the description box below, like a link that'll tell you why, if you give a shit why. If you just want to trust me and watch your moon sign because you already know it, that's awesome. If you don't know your moon sign, there's also a link down there that'll um, tell you what that is. So let's get started! <laughs> the month of February 2018. This first card's about like what's going on with you, what kind of position are you in. You may be feeling hopeless. If I remember right, I think maybe last month you were holding on to an ex. So that makes sense. Um, we need to leave exes in the past for a reason most of the time. Not all the time, but most of the time. <laughs> okay, but maybe it's not about that. Why do you feel hopeless? Um, Oh boy. So yeah, I think it's about somebody that you, this is such a weird thing for Aries because Aries, you're so confident and people are drawn to you and they usually are like all about you, you know, like they just want to be near you and around you because you're so exciting and stuff like that. But there's this person that you're putting on a pedestal, whether you have history with them or not, but you're like, okay, I love everything about this person. They're funny, they're smart, they make me happy, they're sexy, like they're nurturing, they're all of these things. Like you you really put them on a pedestal, okay? Like you, you almost don't even see them as human. And they just are like kind of avoiding you or um, not showing you interest. So maybe you're getting the silent treatment if it's an ex, like that kind of an energy. So I'm sorry, that fucking sucks. Um, but let's see how the rest of your reading turns out. So for better and for worse, what are the behavioral uh, things that you're going to be doing in February or that you should be doing in February? Like what are kind of like your inclinations um, that are going to that are going to help you to bring in love? So here's the deal. This month, if you can find a way to be happy, to find your joy, um, you know, whether that's just like petting puppies or something silly, like finding a way to be happy and taking your mind off of this, even if you're not very spiritual. Like, it doesn't have to be like a, you know what, I'm going to express gratitude um, for the fact that I'm not with this person that I'm thinking about because X, Y, Z, like trying to justify it to yourself because that's not going to work for you in this month. Typically, it's the right thing to do, right? Like when relationships end, you're like, I'm thankful that this ended because now I can attract a better relationship or something like that. Um, or... You know, what is that Garth Brooks song, Some of God's Greatest Gifts or Unanswered Prayers, right? So he's talking about how he really, really wanted to be with this girl in high school. And then um, he grew up and, like, life happened. And then he met somebody that he was, like, way more obsessed with than this first person. And he was like, oh, thank God that God didn't answer my prayer on that because... I wanted this way more and I didn't even know it was an option yet. Like, but they're saying you don't have to gratitude journal and stuff like that. Like, this doesn't have to be like a very spiritual thing for you. Just find, um, find the little band-aids in February, okay? Just like whatever's going to make you feel happy in the moment, do that as long as it's not like a, um, destructive kind of thing, you know, as long as it's not, um... Like, I was, like, I'm not saying go out and do a bunch of molly, you know? That's not what I'm saying because, um, yeah, that'd be a Band-Aid solution for, like, however long it lasts. I don't know. But um, but my point is is that's kind of self-sabotaging, right? Things that make you happy in the moment that aren't self-sabotaging, right? So go to get a massage or um, if you like to work out. Things like that, they don't have to be spiritual things. It's not necessarily about your spiritual growth um, or it's not even about a mind shift or a mindset shift like th these kind of things usually are. Um, so there's like, is it, it's kind of like you just don't feel very stable because all of the things that you were trying to attract, maybe you're trying to attract the wrong things, right? Um, but you have to, despite like maybe how your life isn't going the way you planned, it's not as you're not getting the things that you want or 
um, it's not as predictable as you had hoped, or maybe you're in a bad financial place or something like that, or like all of you signed a lease for a year and then the, your landlord decided to sell the house that you're renting and like, oh shit, now it's <laughs> broken and I have to move in the middle of winter. It's, you know, like that kind of a thing. But they say you're going to find your strength as a result of this, like as a result of whatever kind of circumstances you have that are maybe not making you feel so awesome right now. Um, they're saying that, it's it's almost like a test in February to see like, um, okay, so I'm going to describe this to you in, I'm so sick of talking about law of attraction, but it's, um, you know how like when we're trying to attract things into our life, there's this little, there's another law that a lot of people don't know about called the law of opposite. And sometimes the universe does this, where it'll give you something that is tempting, but it's not exactly what you want. And to see if you're going to settle right before you get something big, okay? So it's like a test of your strength, of your resolve, of your ambition, of your effort to try to um, just keep on moving, keep on moving towards the things that you want. Not necessarily that person that you want, but it, like general concepts, okay? Okay. So that's where we're, where we're at so far. Now, um, what are the things that you need to do in order to kind of grow to be able to attract the right person to you in the month of February? And they're like, you know what? Really, not that much. Just try to get past these unfortunate circumstances. A lot of these things have nothing to do with you. They're kind of like outside things, right? So you might feel maybe like you're a little cursed this month. And I'm sorry to tell you this stuff. Like, I wish I could give you like a really positive, happy reading. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, Sagittarius had that, Pisces had that, Capricorn had that, Aquarius had that. So um, it fucking sucks, and I'm sorry, Aries. But there's no point for me to do these readings for you if I'm not going to be honest, right? I, I would rather be honest with you and then have you be forewarned and therefore forearmed as opposed to just, like, lying to you and then having you get mad later, like, you're not even accurate, <laughs> right? It'd be a waste of everybody's time if I was going to sit here and lie to you. So um, basically, you can kind of just be smart and prepare that this may not be your easiest month of the year, okay? Um, and it's not because it's your fault or anything like that. It's just it's not going to be your easiest month um, in regards to your love life. But not every month can be. And I would try to frame that as a blessing that by contrast, now I'm going to be stronger and I'm going to be much more appreciative when the right thing does come through for me. So let's see if we can get a sneak peek as to when the right thing will come through for you. <laughs> Just because I'm nosy. Okay, here's what they say. They make a joke. Not in the next seven weeks. So maybe by the end of March. But they're saying ultimately, though, we're not going to say um, anything in regards to specific time because you're a large group. They just say it depends on how much you allow things from the past to end and how much you don't. So um, for those of you who are going to hold on to things from the past, hold on to past loves um, when the relationship is clearly over, if you're going to hold on to outdated ideas and things like that, um, if you're not able to move and shift and kind of get on this new path of new beginnings, it's going to be a long time for you. Because it's saying like the energy is, is trying to bring you something new, and good and different but you have to be open to that and a lot of you are still in the past and if you're feeling depressive this month part of that is normal because of the circumstances but the other part of that is that it's because you're living in the past if you're living in the past you feel depressed if you're living in the future you feel anxious but so you want to be really focused right now on um, being mindful in the present and they're saying like you're not alone. Like you have people around you or if you don't have people around you, you have your spirit guides, you can ask them for your for their help. It's just that you're kind of not doing it. Um, so make sure that you use the resources available to you. What they're saying here too is um, if you want to have like a, like a magical soulmate connection, like a, a great relationship, you need to kind of put it out there, right, to be able to attract it. And they say along the way, you might have to meet a few people who are great in certain ways, but they're not your um, soulmates, and you'll recognize that. But when your emotions are balanced and when you're feeling better after these, like, outside circumstances and that struggle, um, see the emotional balance with the water here? She's, she's um, kind of, like, kneeling down, putting 
a lot of her leg on the earth. So it's almost like, okay, I'm surrendering, surrendering to these circumstances and I've decided that from an emotional standpoint, I'm going to be okay. Pay attention to mess messages and signs. You see with that bird? But they're saying like, I'm deciding that this is how I'm going to feel about it. And as a result, eventually you're going to get this big thing that you're wishing for in terms of um, the relationship that you desire. But it's like this month is going to be more of a month of like personal growth and stuff where you kind of got to just like surrender to circumstances and learn to trust in divine source, what whatever you believe in the universe, God, Allah, whatever. Okay. So, um, sorry about it. it sucks. Uh, what do you need to change in order to attract love into your life? And they're like, you just have to get emotionally balanced. It's almost like, um, actually, I want to say it's School of Life. Give me a second. There is a YouTube channel that just put a video out on this, and it was in my recommended videos. When I'm getting ready for my day, I'll just, like, pick a random recommended video from my YouTube on my phone. Um... Hopefully something like motivational or educational. And I'm going to check here and see what that was called because it was really good. It was talking about how until we are okay with being single, and it's like backed up by psychological studies and stuff, until we feel really comfortable in our emotional state, like, eh, I could take it or leave it. Like a relationship, if it comes, great. If it doesn't, eh, whatever, fuck it. I'm comfortable being single. Until you feel that way, um, you're not going to attract the right relationships because you're going to be trying to get something from a relationship that you need to get from within yourself first. I'm looking for this because I want you, if this is you, I want you to be able to watch it and um, have it articulated to you better than I could do. <laughs> okay, so it is from the School of Life and it's called uh, Why Only the Happy Single find true love. And I'm just going to rewind this here so you can see what the what the cover photo looks like. Oh, damn it. Sorry. Thanks for being patient. Hmm. Okay, well, it's kind of like two raindrops kissing each other in a boat or something. They're blue and they have like a heart above their head. There, can you see it? Okay. <laughs> there it was. Um, so that would be a good video for you to watch. Now the final card I wanna pull for you is, um, what are some things that you need to release in order to attract the love that you want in the month of February? Oh, this is so sad. They're saying like, any ideas that you have that like love isn't coming for you, that it doesn't exist for you, that you're not romantic, that you're not capable of loving somebody or um, receiving love, they're like, let that go. They also say that um, like some of you have these ideas that you just have a different mindset, like you want different things than everybody else around you. Maybe this is because you're a Mormon, right? And you live near a bunch of um, Muslims, like, <laughs> you know, it's just like, it could be anything. It could be culture. It could be religion. It could be, um, just mindset in general. Maybe you don't believe in marriage. Uh, maybe you do. And like everybody around you is just like up for a, for a love them and leave them kind of thing. But they're like, these, these ideas, they're not serving you. Cause the only thing that it's doing is attracting that reality into your life. And that's why you're stuck. And you, maybe that's why it's hard to move on from whoever this person is that you put up on a pedestal. So I'm sorry that your reading was a little bit doom and gloom. Um, it's not as positive as maybe the other signs, but I do have to be honest with you. So I want to also, as long as I have you here, um, find out in regards to love, like what positive thing is coming for you in the next three months. Oh, it's kind of cute. <laughs> I like it. Okay, so they're saying, well, like we talked about before, you're going to grow a lot of inner strength and confidence within yourself as a result of this difficulty, okay? They say the challenge is for you to um, 
once you do that, look at how they both have the infinity symbol above their head. They say anything is possible should you follow this guidance. Should you work on yourself and grow inner strength, anything that you want is possible, including love. Because look, the cup is the biggest thing on the table. So he's asking spirit, God, Allah, whatever, for the universe, for what he wants. And then he is blessed and it comes down onto the earth, like into real material form. He's going to get the things that he wants, but that's a challenge for you to stay focused with that hope card that we had before, the star. Um, I always call it the hope card, but the star card, um, thinking about what it is that you want, you have to try to manifest that. And that is hard for you when you haven't yet achieved this strength. But within three months, should you choose that path? You'll be there and you'll be getting the things that you want. They say big changes are coming and they will be for the better. They will be, no matter what. But they're not easy. Life is rarely easy. But the things that are hard are the areas where we learn the most lessons, right? Where we change the most, where we better ourselves. And so this is actually a blessing, even though it doesn't feel like a blessing, right? The horse is white. It's pure. It's leading him to something good. Right, but but the but the old you has to die a little bit so that the new better you um, can move forward. And so they're saying, you know, you're shedding a little bit of your ego. This is an Aries card. They're like, because you know, you're trying to attract this empress that you had. And tarot's not gender specific, so it doesn't have to be a lady. It could be a dude. You you this is the person that you want, right? That you put them on a pedestal, and usually you're the one on the pedestal. So it's hard when they reject you, right? But you kind of just have to let that not affect you so much. You kind of have to let go of your ego. Like, and I'm not saying you guys are egomaniacs. Some of you probably are. Let's not <laughs> lie here. But not all of you are. And if you're watching a tarot video, you're definitely probably not one of those. Just because you're more emotionally in tune and spiritually connected than the rest of them. But, you know, it's funny. I feel like Pisces and cancers watch the most tarot videos and it's because they're so emotional. So it's not a judgment, okay? But but my point is, um, you're always like so sure of yourself, right? And so for other people to maybe see that you're not infallible um, is kind of attractive because when you're like this powerful person that everybody looks up to and everybody appreciates and they trust them, like you might have a you might be in a position of power or something. Um, people just look up to you and, and they really like you and they're attracted to you and they're drawn to you and they find you sexy. Like not in like a, um, not like in a very George Clooney way, right? Like, <laughs> like very classy, but not, not like skanky sexy, but like, but, okay. So like, for example, who's that guy, the magic Mike guy? that all these girls think is so cute. He's not my taste. I forget. That's why I don't know what his name is. But um, the guy with like the muscles, and he's like, yeah, I'm dancing like half naked. That guy versus George Clooney, okay? You would be George Clooney. It's very appealing to the masses. From anyone like 20 years old to 80 years old, they all want to bone George Clooney, but they're a little intimidated. Where the other guy is like more approachable, but you're kind of like, eh. Like you get bored with it fast, right? <laughs> so, so you're George Clooney. So, or, you know, the female version of it because the emperor and the tarot, like I said, tarot is not gender specific because it's a dude that's where I, my mind goes. So anyway, point is, is, um, if they can see you a little less intimidating and see that you're like, not this, um, what's the word for that? It's almost like you're not even human. Like you're you're bigger than human, right? <laughs> um, if they can see you a little more human, then you're a little more approachable. Okay. So anyway, love and light. And what else did I want to tell you? Oh, um, I'm gonna give away a 20 minute video reading from now on every month until I'm sick of it. I've been feeling really generous and happy lately, so I'm gonna do that. If you want to sign up to win it. It's um, on my website. There's like a little smiley face icon if you're on your phone. And then you just say, yes, I want to manifest this. And you only have to enter once and then you're automatically entered every month. If you're not interested, well then forget I said that. And then if you watch the Aries video for February, the general one, um, 
your crystal of the month was amethyst. So for those of you who are feeling um, like you want to spiritually connect a little bit more, even though it's not necessarily super important for you in this month, it's more about like your inner self, but spirit definitely helps us through changes and um, kind of like bettering our, ourselves, right? Um, amethyst is the stone. So that's why I bring it up because amethyst is like the most spiritual stone that there is. It really helps you to connect to the divine. Celestine is another one that does that. Um, just because that one like calls in the angels for you. But if you don't have experience in connecting with angels, like if you're um, going to be more comfortable kind of just like intuiting messages, then I would go with am amethyst. So anyway, that's just some info for you. Love and light, and I will see you next month. Thanks so much for watching my video. Check out terriblyaccurate.com for a personal reading. Follow on Snapchat, like on Facebook.